Gloria Rubach testifying for. Okay, we'll note that she's for and not testifying. <laughs> testifying for, and I may, uh, I'm reading it, H O O M A. N, I think, H-E-D-A-Y-A-T-I. And my name's Human Hedayati, uh, and I'm a UT student. I just wanted to testify as an Austin uh, resident about this case. Uh, I am one of the more than 2,000 people who filed the complaint uh, first against Judge Sharon Keller in 2007. And uh, I was actually in UT, on UT campus two hours ago where uh, Shirin Abadi, the 2003 Nobel Peace Prize winner, was uh, talking. And uh, she was outraged to learn about the case of Judge Sharon Keller and that this kind of thing still can go on, that the judge can refuse to accept the case just because it's 5 p.m. and she has to go home. And according to the charges filed by the Ethics Commission, uh, I think she had an appointment with a plumber at her house around the same time. So I'm wondering if that influenced her decision at all to do this. Uh, uh, I mean, if we want to ask people to follow our uh, laws, I mean, we cannot ask our people to follow our laws when uh, we do not require our judges, especially the highest, uh, the highest criminal judge in the state, to do not follow the same rules. We have to uh, keep these judges to the highest standards. And I just wanted to give a quote from uh, her campaign back then when she was running for the court. In one of the, her campaigns, she said that I want to uh, represent the perspective of the prosecutor in the court. And I'm wondering if a judge that we want to uh, uh, make a fair decision and look at every case equally, I mean, is that the person that says before I'm getting on the court that she's going to uh, vote in favor of uh, the prosecutors rather than the others. And the same judge, Judge Sharon Killer, in a case, she has voted that it is okay for a death row inmate uh, to get executed even though his lawyer slipped in the court, his lawyer showed up drunk to the court, even though the lawyers failed to file their appeals at the same time. And at the same time, she's asking the state to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for her legal fees because she says if she doesn't get the money she cannot afford, she's not going to get a fair trial. And I'm wondering how many people do you think get hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees to represent themselves? And uh, the fact is that she can afford to pay for all these fees herself. And uh, the recent news came out last week or two weeks ago that she had actually uh, failed to file proper financial uh, uh, reports uh, with the commission. She has much more, uh, she owns much more property that she claimed to have. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to go into details of the case because everyone, uh, I'll let legal scholars to do that, but uh, just to point, I think, to one of the questions that was asked why the Supreme Court uh, had denied the case. I don't think the Supreme Court I think the reason the Supreme Court denied uh, Michael Richard's appeal was because the Court of Criminal Appeals did not make a ruling in that case. And the reason they denied it, uh, I believe, was because the lower court did not make a decision, so they refused to accept Michael Richard's case at that time. And I think that's what happened. If the CCA had ruled in favor of Michael Richard, it would not have been executed. And if they had denied Michael Richard's, uh, if they had denied his appeal, then it would have gone to Supreme Court and they would have probably stayed the execution because they did, they had stayed another execution, I believe, in the same day in another state. So it's basically certain that they would have stayed Michael Richard's execution. Even one of the other Republican uh, judges in the same court, uh, Tom Price, in uh, her, during the re-election campaign primaries, and he called Judge Sharon Killer uh, a national, she said that John Ka Sharon Killer had, has made Texas a national laughing stock because of all her outrageous ruling and decisions that she writes. And I don't think we have to be a national laughing stock. I think uh, by this, uh, 
committee by voting in favor of uh, Representative Burnham's resolution, you can make a statement that Texas is not a national or a laughing stock, and we can be better than this. Uh, we have, we yeah. should have a judicial. Yeah. Sure. I'm just trying to remember. I, was Tom Price her opponent? Yes, she was her opponent during Republican primary. He said primary. something bad about her. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, all I have to say is that the justice should not be a 9 a.m. to a 5 p.m. thing. It should be a thing that everybody should get a fair chance. Even those who we deem to be the worst of the worst, they still deserve to get a fair hearing in our criminal justice system. Any Thank questions, you. Dan? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with your I agree with your last statements. Do you happen to know the the pr previous two witnesses didn't? Do you happen to know whether or not the uh, lawyer for the uh, accused knew that Justice Johnson was the quote on duty justice? Uh, I don't believe they knew about that. I think it was revealed after Michael Richard was executed. And uh, when one of the reporters, uh, probably Austin American statesman that had contacted them, and then that was when uh, Judge Johnson found out about uh, uh, the case. She didn't even know that Michael Richard's lawyers had sent an appeal until it was too late. That's what I think I am, but I might be wrong. You should double check. So you're not. You're not sure if the if the lawyer knew that the judge judge Justice Johnson. Yeah, I, I don't think they knew, but uh, I'm not certain. Thank you. Well, uh, I don't know how important this is, but you seem to indicate that if the the request for the stay had been filed, the Court of Criminal Appeals might have granted the stay. But my understanding is all all the lawyers involved agree that. The, the court of appeals would court of criminal appeals would have denied the requested stay. Yeah, based on their precedent and their, their yes, they would have denied the stay. And I think if they denied the stay, it would have officially the lawyers have should have been able to file an appeal with the supreme court. And, and I think the supreme court did not accept the case based not on the merits of the case, but just because the lower court did not make a decision. And I think they did not have the jurisdiction to hear Michael Richard's case. And also, my understanding is that they, they did have time to file an appeal with the United States Supreme Court, which was denied at 7.30 p.m. Yeah. And I think that was the appeal that they denied because CCA did not make a ruling. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thanks. Next is Charles Herring testifying for... Thank you. My name is Charles Herring. I'm an attorney in private practice uh, in Austin. I'm here to speak in favor of the resolution. I practice law for almost 34 years now. My principal area of practice is the law of lawyering, legal ethics, legal malpractice, professional responsibility of Texas lawyers. Um, I wrote my first law book in 1990 on that subject, Texas Legal Malpractice and Lawyer Discipline, and I've updated that annually, so I've spent some 20 years writing and teaching legal ethics. I've served two terms on the Texas Supreme Court's Advisory Committee, chair of the State Bar's Committee on the Prevention of Malpractice and Grievances, and uh, have chaired various other committees for the court and the bar. I submit this testimony solely on behalf and not on behalf of any other entity, certainly. Uh, in my opinion, respectfully, the conduct of uh, Judge Keller as reported in the media and as stated in the notice of proceedings uh, from the commission clearly meets the constitutional standards for impeachment if the facts are true, as stated. Uh, I want to make two general